G'day, I'm Dave TTC and this is Dave's Cave. This is day 11 of my market challenge. Now, there's another video coming out which is good news and the bad news. It was meant to come out two days ago. It's still in the making. I'm not sure when this one's coming out, whether it'll come out first or last. But anyway, uh, if you've already got the good news, the good news is we've got one more day. There was a mix up in messages and when the market was going to be and it's actually another day away. So my 11 day market challenge has become a 12 day, which is just as well because all I've got ready to sell are my uh, wine glass caddies and my solo bottle rack. Today I have a tutorial on how to make wooden propellers for toy planes or I don't know maybe you want to make a toy what do they call those things? Drone. Hmm, there's an idea. Something else I can make. A wooden drone. It doesn't work. Anyway, propellers. How do you go about making a propeller that has pitch, the yaw, or whatever it is. I'm not an aeronautic engineer. I don't know what all the different angles are called. But obviously you've got your hub in the middle and then you've got your propellers. And we're just going to go for a two blade propeller because to have another blade going the other way, it would be weak grain. So two blades suits me. How do you get that angle there? How do you get your bow tight uh, look? Well, there's a few different ways. You could use a jigsaw, coping saw, scroll saw. Um, I want a method that is repeatable and relatively quick. So my method is going to use a table saw with a table saw sled. I'm going to use the lathe to drill my hole in the centre, but realistically you could do this with drill press but you don't need a lathe so you could use a drill press what i can do with the lathe is while i'm doing it i can just score the outer edge but again of the hub that is you could just guess that freehand when it comes to sanding ah that's the other thing if you've got like a little lacy sander or belt sander or something that will help um, so i'd say Adding up the tools. If you're doing it with power tools like I do, uh, I use a drop saw as well, but you could use your sled if you've only got a sled. Um, doing the angles on the drop saw can be done, not as easy. Um, I did start with drop saw. My height gauge didn't go up high enough for me to be able to cut that only down to cut the angle down to the hub. So let's go make a start. We're going to use some decking, 19 mil, or for you who speak that foreign language, I think it's something like about three quarter. Three quarter by three and a half. Making me work my brain. Yeah, about three and a half. If you've got decking board, three and a half by three quarter. That's what I'm using, roughly speaking, or in real language. I think it's the real language. It's the language that makes sense to me. Metric is so easy to use. You just add one plus one is two. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think of my kids, you know, try to teach them fractions. Anyway, another subject. Um, so we're using 90 by 19 Merbu decking. Let's go to the swamp. Okay, I'm going to make my propeller. I've already put a mark on here. Don't really know what it is. Um, by the looks of it, I'm making it about 96.5 mil long. And the only reason I did that is because I made it the same width as the chuck, so I just put a piece in there, marked it, and then cut it. So that's the only reason. You can make it longer, you can make it shorter. 
you can work that bit out yourself whatever suits your material but there we go there's my bark so I've only got reeded stuff left I'm going to put the reed to the back and I think by the time I cut all my angles there might not be any of it left anyway so we'll be fine so we're just going to go there's my mark Okay, so now my propeller is going to be out of this here. There's one I prepared earlier. But I'll show you the process so that you know what I'm doing. First step is I want to cut this bow tie effect, which I rip on the table saw. Set the angle, 5 degrees. Okay, we're going to try and do this in real time. So one of the first things we've got to do is flip our fence over and I'm going on the wrong side of the blade. I call it the wrong. Okay. Flip the fence over. We're going on the wrong side of the blade. I call it the wrong side because normally I'm on the other side and it's just because the way the saw tips, I need to be on this side. I'll bring my saw across. Let me give you a chance to see what I'm doing. Wibbly wobbly. Okay. So I'm going to set my saw here. Five, I'm going to make it five and a half degrees. I want a little bit more than the last one. Five and a half degrees, all of this, and I can sit it on. Okay, might be it. There we go. All right, it's balancing on my other sled down here. All of this just so that you've got a good angle. Let me have a look and see if you can see. Yeah. Okay, so I've set my saw at five and a half degrees. I'm going to make the bow tie stand out a little bit more than the other one with less sanding. The other one I had to sand it a bit. I'm going to run out a fence there. Okay, just going to bump everything across. I'm going to poke a hole in my fly screen. I just want to barely leave some of that wood on there. And so that's about where I'm setting it height-wise. So we're talking at 96.5 mil, 40, 80, 15, so about 7.5 mil below centre of your timber, uh, roughly speaking. Um, so in this case, my height is 40 mil. Wish these things had a height guide on them. Um, DeWalt, oh, you can see now on wide angle, what am I worried about? DeWalt, if you're listening, love a height guide gauge on this thing. Um, anyone out there, if you've got a DeWalt table saw and you've rigged up some sort of height guide so you know what your height is, that'd be great. I mean, I don't even care if it's not necessarily the exact height of the blade, just to reference so I can say, okay, repeatability, I will go to the gauge says X. Anyway, we this is in the direction of the grain. We have the grain facing down. We go rip, rip, flip, rip, rip. Let's do it. This is for my friend in Tasmania. I've been a good example. And for Marty over in the States in America, Protection. All right, I think we're looking good there.
our next process is cutting the angle on the blade. So yeah, that's right, the angle is on the blade. The blade of the propeller. Now, once again, we're going to use our table sleeve. So what I've got here is a block cut at 15 degrees. I'll give you an over the head look, over the top look. So this is 15 degrees in line with the edge there and then you'll see the process shortly I think from the edge on this side to our stop uh, it looks like about 8 mil can't see the blade but the blade is right here <clears throat> now for this step We cut at about What am I doing that cut there? Okay, just have to orientate myself here. Okay, that's it there. Uh, I don't know what that cut is, about 40 mil, I think. 38 mil. Just going to duck over to the other saw. I don't want that rounded edge on there because I want to be able to line up really accurately there. So I'm just going to trim that on the drop saw. Okay, so it's just a case of lining up that back edge there with that very corner there. Now that I've turned this around to let you see what I'm doing, I've got a shadow which makes it a little bit harder. So I'm going to cut that. Slide it across, cut it again, flip it over, do the same thing, and do it again. See it in action. drop saw, I've got a mark there which is how big I cut propeller. Basically I'm just lining up with the back edge, uh, so whatever that measurement happens to work out to. Uh, in this case it's looking about 13 mil at a guess. Um, maybe it's 14, no, this one reads the wrong way. hate these ones, I have, where's my other one? Metric and Imperial, I just want metric only. Um, it's about 12.5 mil. All right, 
So I'm going to pop that over there. I've got the mark. Because we didn't nibble off that section and it didn't split off like one of these did on the table saw over there, we've got a little bit left. So I'm just going to nip that off. Okay, that's getting us a little bit closer. I don't know whether I'm going to do this in here. Yep, I think I might. Um, I wonder. All I'm trying to do here is space the propeller out enough. No, that's not going to work. Um, let me have a look. If it's back there, can I get in there? Mm, maybe. All right. I was hoping just to mark the hub. I just want to get out past the jaw. Oh, that's what I need. One of these without all the jaws on an angle grinder. That'll do it. All right. Not sure what I'm going to do here. I might be able to get in there. But I have got that, and I need a drill bit. Uh, we're going to say around about. I've got no idea. Let's have a look what drill I used before. Uh, that was a 3.5. Yeah. We got something that looks somewhere in the vicinity of 3.5. Um, okay, yeah, it was a bit bigger, it's more like a, oh no, there we go, oh, it depends where I grab it, interesting, aha, there's a gap in the calipers, okay, it looks like about 4.5, I think 4.5 will be fine because the other one was a little bit tight. Okay, let's drill it. This lathe is a thing of beauty, so quiet. I oh, love it. I've got one of those Audi ones just so that I could use it, you know, just something cheap and mobile to maybe give lessons. Oh man, the thing is so noisy. Okay, just doing a little bit of a relief there for um, countersink a screw. I think that's enough. Now without let's have a look. Okay, the hub we can come out a bit more with that.
Yep, I'm happy with that. Now you could use a hole saw and a drill and just score it and that would be enough for a sanding guide. Um, I had a tool to undo the chuck. I'm going to have to come back and watch this after I upload it to know where I put it. Okay, baby boy. Oh, uh, yep. Down in the sawdust. Man, I can hardly see that. Oh, uh, you know what? Couldn't do this before. I'll flip it over. This is a different process than I was using before. I'm going to tidy up the back as well. Yep, I'm happy. Yep, I'm going to leave it at that. Let's take her out. Now just for your reference, I have the belt set up right on the edge of the wheel so that I can get a nice sharp corner.
And there we have it. A rush job, but uh, took a little bit longer because I was setting up each station specifically for it. But we have our countersink, a hole in the center. Now we just have a hint of the reed uh, because it was reeded decking instead of plain. But it was good, happy with that. I probably could have gone a little bit deeper with the recess for the screw and it's that easy to put it back in the lathe, I could do that as well. I hope that's still recording, I went into low battery so we'll see what happens. But there you have a propeller, uh, if you're batching them out hopefully you can do them quicker. They're quite uh, fastidious, there's a lot of work out. Anyway, that's today's episode. Please don't forget, like, subscribe, ring the bell, play a bell, ding ding, ring the bell, like, subscribe and share. Please share it around, promote the station, tell your friends about it. You know, they might have a chuckle, they might learn something, they might teach me something. I'm not, uh, I'm not immune to learning, I've got a lot to learn and if you can share things with me, more than happy to hear about it. So, thanks again. See you tomorrow.